I like how the one day I have off work to actually shoot a video and use my window as my light. I'm sick. My throat is not the best. But no one cares. Show must go on. You gotta suck it up and just make the video. Stay hydrated. Drink some disgusting orange juice that's in the fridge. And just go. <laughs> but anyway, hello, what is up, guys? I'm Kyle from KGR, and welcome to Show and Tell. For the few that are new, Show and Tell is my monthly pickup series. But for those who have been watching, yeah, I know it's late. I I work all day, and by the time I get home, it's so dark outside that like I can't light the video all too well. So. I can't make videos. I'm gonna invest in more lights hopefully soon. We'll see what happens. I need a new tripod too, because this thing's barely kicking. But before we get into the video, uh, I wanna discuss a little bit something about my life because I like being personal. My subscribers already know this already. So for those who've been following me for a while, you already know I work at Best Buy and I work at a video game stand at a flea market. I've been doing the video game stand for a long time. Well, the flea market itself closed, not for the season. For good. No more video game stand. So I lost that job, and it was honestly one of the best jobs I've ever had. Uh, so I'm losing about like three to four hundred dollars a month. So with that said, I'm not sure how well Show and Tell is gonna go for the future for 2020. I mean, I just gotta learn how to be financially responsible again. Like I'm good at budgeting and all that stuff. I just gotta get better at it. Well, let's just say even better at it. And I'm pretty sure I'll be fine. And I know our video game stand is gonna be looking at other flea markets. We're taking the winter off for now. So for a few months. Uh, budgeting might be a little bit tight, but we'll see what happens. But more importantly, um, we might open up another stand. We'll see what happens. If I'm going to still work there, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm, I, I'll be fine. I mean, I'm still excited to see what the future holds. Um, I might find another job. I might just go full-time Best Buy or I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I had plenty of memories there. I made plenty of friends. And again, it was one of the best jobs ever. And I'm very thankful for the people I've met and like the opportunities I had. Like, it was... A good time but when one door closes another one opens so I just gotta keep that in mind and I'll find a way like things will be okay and I wasn't telling you guys about all that stuff to make you guys feel bad for me like I just want to give you updates on life because that's how I am that's what I like to do but more importantly it's more just hey I'm not sure how well show and tell is gonna go anymore but I'm pretty confident I'll be fine now and no I'm not gonna open a patreon like every other youtuber because I don't want to be become someone's monthly bill. If you want to donate, by all means, do it in the live streams so you can see my live reaction and all that stuff. Because I am really grateful for any money that people give me because people work hard for their money. But I don't want it to be like, oh, it's that time of the month. Okay, cable, internet, car insurance, KGR. Like, no. Morally, I just can't do that. And personally, I don't want to turn this into a career. So there really is no point in me making a Patreon. It's just, this is a hobby. It's all it's gonna be, and it's all it's ever gonna be. Cause once money really gets involved, then that's when, like, I don't know, things shift, at least for me. And I'm pretty sure plenty of other people are like that too. Turning your passion into a career, it, it, sometimes it's good, but YouTube is not a stable enough platform for the longevity of life. There is no 401k, there is no benefits, there's no health insurance, like no. Uh, that I just don't find it responsible, personally. So I'm not gonna do it, but, Okay, with all that said, or with all that out of the way, let's get into everything that I picked up for November. I got a good mixture of stuff. I got some new stuff, old stuff, figures, games, and I got a cool a couple of cool promo items. Uh, so, a. But uh, I, I may not be Steve from Blue's Clues with, with no handy dandy notebook. I used to have one, by the way, when I was younger. But I do got a phone with notes of everything that I bought. So. Thank God for that, because I can keep track of my stuff. <laughs> and the first thing that I got is a Crash Bandicoot thing. So, one sec. <laughs> of course you guys know who've been following me for a while, my main goal for show and tell, at least of 2019, is to get something Crash Bandicoot related every month. And, so far I haven't failed yet. I'm very <laughs> proud of that. But next year, on the other hand, I don't know, I'm not gonna keep that goal anymore, because it's, it's getting tough now. But I only got one Crash Bandicoot thing this month, and honestly, it's one of the coolest things I've gotten for Crash. So this one gets a big shout out to my one of my viewers, Sergio. Like, he hooked me up with this. He didn't give it to me. He, like, he let me know about it. But like, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have gotten this because I would have never seen it. And this is something that I've had 
as a kid multiple times. At least I'm pretty confident I've had it multiple times. I have at least got it once. And that is the uh, Resaurus Jetboard Crash Bandicoot. Now, yeah, I've actually had this as a kid. I even have my childhood, like, golden Aku Aku mask, and I have my childhood jet board. It's broken. But as a Crash collector, uh, even as a figure collector, I wanted a Crash figure in the box for a long time because this is my childhood. Like, I've gotten Crash figures at least once a week, like, almost every week as a kid. Like, I almost have the whole set. As a kid, I almost had the whole set. <laughs> I was missing quite a few figures, though, to be fair. Like, even in this is series one, I only had half the figures. Like, I always wanted Tiny. I never had Cortex as much as I wanted him. But man, he is, he is a creepy mofo. Like, for a, for a while, like, this is, this is the only Cortex figure. And we're getting a new one soon enough. And Komodo Mo, I don't remember ever seeing him in store, I don't think. I don't, maybe I did. I just don't have any memory. But Tiny is one I've always seen and always wanted. But he was a big boy. But anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. So I've had this figure as a kid. And this is actually a first edition where both of his feet are flat. Because in later releases, they actually angled his back foot so it would lean more against the engine, like the exhaust. And unfortunately, the, cr uh, the box is a little bit crushed on the top. But honestly, I don't care. Like, I paid... $40, like $42 for this. They want a 45 or best offer, so I offer them 40 bucks. And normally they go for a lot more than this. They, they go for like double that. And I'm like, absolutely I'll go for it. Even though, I don't know. Oh, I just realized something. On the back of the box, where it shows Jetpack Crash, not Jetpack, the Jetboard Crash, it shows them with the angled foot. So, the story of that, honestly, I don't know. That is a very, very interesting thing. But the next figures I do want, if I end up getting more Crash figures in the box, Jetpack Crash is definitely a top priority. Uh, maybe Tiny, because I always wanted him, but I don't know. I don't plan on collecting all the figures, but I am so thankful to have this, because this is something I've been going for for a while, and I've always been waiting for a deal. And even though $40 is still expensive, because when these things came out, they were only like $6. Like, no shit. So, the fact that I have it again, like, it means the world to me. So thank you so much, Sergio, for hooking me up with this. Like, this is incredible. Like, ah, oh, you're awesome. But the one thing that bothers me about having figures in a box is I want to open them. But luckily, I do have an open one over there on another shelf. So we good. So the next thing I got is a promo item that technically came out a long time ago, but uh, now I finally got it. And that is the Pokemon Let's Go Eevee slash Pikachu uh, Steelbook. Now, I'm not a collector of steelbooks, but uh, eventually, like long after the game came out, our Pokemon decided to do a, a promo for Best Buy where you got a steelbook if you bought the game. And I didn't get it late. I got it at launch, so we didn't have this. And again, I don't really care about steelbooks. But then eventually, uh, they couldn't ring it up well anymore. Like, here the, the bundle promotion was no longer there, where like they would uh, make you pay for this thing. But that's the thing though, it's not for individual resale though, as you see right there, so like, I don't know, we couldn't do a promo thing anymore, so they took it out of the system, and now they're, then they were just giving them away. So, I took one, and it's still sealed, uh, honestly, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, like, it looks so cool, but I don't plan on buying Steelbooks anymore, ever, like, I only got it because it was free. Now watch, I'm going to buy more Steelbooks, I don't want to. But another thing I got is also from Best Buy. And this one did not even involve a discount. It was just on sale. And as of this recording, it's on sale for like 25 bucks. So get it. I highly recommend it. And this is a mouse. It's the Logitech G602. It's a wireless mouse. I think it's technically a gaming mouse because it has all these buttons on the side. But honestly, I use all the buttons and plus there's like two click buttons right here. I use all these for like sh short keys, like page forward, page back, double click. But more importantly, uh, this one, I'm going to use as my play button for when I'm editing videos. But I mainly got this for editing, to be completely honest. Like, my friend Ian, which he's going to be brought up again later in the video. Here, he gave, he showed me his mouse. I'm like, dude, don't show me this mouse because I'm going to buy it. He's like, dude, just try it. Because I had, like, one of those generic gaming mice from, like, Amazon that are, like, really cheap for, like, eight bucks. And I'm like, after using it, I'm feeling all the buttons. I'm like, I could use this. I could use that. Oh, crap. Here we go. So then he bought it for me. But, but he was willing to buy it for me, actually. And I'm like, no, no. So I bought it myself. $25 later, I got a nice mouse. And I'm looking forward to using it for editing. 
so we'll see how it goes. Uh, next up, I got a couple of display things. Uh, honestly, personally, I've never seen these displayed at Best Buy because I'm always at customer service or checkout, and when I get off work, I go home. I don't want to have anything to do with that place for a little bit. <laughs> Sometimes I stay and hang out with a couple of coworkers, or maybe, maybe, maybe do a little bit of shopping. But for the most part, it's just me going home, getting out of there. So I've never seen these displayed, but they're really cool, so I took them home. And they are Luigi's Mansion 3 displays. Uh, we got this one right here. It's, it's not too big, uh, but as of right now, I really have no room for these. But I got them because they were really cool. So eventually, I might give this one to somebody. But as of right now, like I have no spot. But the other two displays that I got for Luigi's Mansion 3 are too cool, and I'm not getting rid of them, even though I have no spot for them right now. I think I'm going to put these on whatever I get, like little bookshelves. I'm probably going to put these on the sides of them. So as of right now, they have no spot, but they are too cool to pass up and I guess they're like two halves of something so I guess we got this one right here where you got a boo a egad is it Luigi oh we got a pup and then we got Gooigi and it, 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 it's long it's really long and it's really cool I'm like hell yeah I'm taking that that's too cool and the next one has uh, a new ghost, uh, another new ghost, uh, another new ghost, and Luigi! Honestly, they put Luigi on this one, I, this would be the one that I would not care about at all. But only, I only care about this one because Luigi is on it. Because the other ghosts, I give no, no craps about. Which, by the way, I haven't even finished Luigi's Mansion 3 yet. Like, I played for a couple hours and just stopped because Pokemon came out. And plus working and all that stuff, like... Again, I, I've been working at Best Buy for over a year, and I still don't know how to manage my time yet. In due time, I'll figure it out. And I roll it up like this. It's very small. Like, man, I can't wait to display this somehow. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I can't do it right now. There, I got nothing to display it on. I'm out of room. But in the future, this thing is going to be awesome. Uh, next up, I got uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield. I, I got the double pack. Originally, um... I was gonna buy a sword and then I was gonna get shield separately uh, for the girlfriend I had at the time. Then we broke up and I didn't cancel her order yet. <laughs> Cause I was gonna like sell it to another friend because I was gonna get like extra points or whatever if I bought it. Then the, the double pack came out and they're like, oh, if you get the double pack, you also get a coin. And I do have like the rest of the Nintendo coins for the Switch. So I'm like, of course I gotta have this Pokemon coin. But this coin's different though. Like, there's other ones that are around the same size, all in acrylic cases and all that stuff. This coin's bigger and thinner, I think, and I don't know how to feel about it. So it comes in this little pouch. So that looks really cool. And I know, like, Target, I believe, did the uh, Golden Steel book. So the fact that I don't have that, honestly, I don't care. And it comes with this little display. Like, I've seen these before, but much bigger, and they're so cool. So this mini one is really cute. But here's the coin, uh, here's uh, the one for sword, here's the other one for shield, um, yeah, I don't know their names. I honestly didn't play too much Pokemon Shield. I beat the third gym, and I haven't played it for a couple of weeks. It's not that I don't care, it's just, one, I don't have time, and when I finally do have time, I just want to relax, I just want to do whatever. But um, I ended up selling my copy of Sword to my friend Ian. Again, like this is not the only part. Like, Ian is like one of my closest friends right now. Like he's such a good friend, and he actually lives right down the street. So like, you'll see him in live streams and plenty of them. So yeah, get used to him. So yeah, I kept Shield because there was honestly a lot more. Like when they announced the games more and more, there was more to Shield that I liked than Sword. So I just chose Shield. He loves Sword. Like he's really into it. So I'm happy that he got the game, and I sold it to him for like 50 bucks. Like, so I saved him probably like 14 dollars. So I'm happy that he's enjoying the game. But you wanna know what else came out the same day as Pokemon? Amiibos! Yeah, I love Amiibos. Yeah, only three Amiibos came out, uh, but it's it's pretty good. I like it. Uh, we got uh, Incineroar, who I also call Combat Cat. We got Simon Belmont, which honestly, like the way his face looks is incredible. This is a great looking Amiibo. I'm proud of this one. And then we got Krom, which honestly, about time we got another Chrome Amiibo because I have it. The other one is still in the box from the Fire Emblem line. I think he used to be worth a little bit of money. Now I don't know. Who cares? I think it just looks cool in the box. 
Right, I got one more thing at Best Buy, and then I took a bunch of souvenirs from the game stand on like my last couple of weeks. So the last thing I got at Best Buy, this it was it's also a sentimental thing, but more for like like not for work, but just in general for life. So I always wanted to have a Polaroid and take cute pictures with a girl that I'm dating, which as of this recording, I'm seeing a new girl and she's she's really sweet. She's really great. So this thing that I got is kind of for us. It's not a Polaroid, at least not a branded Polaroid. I want one, I want an actual Polaroid, but God, they are so expensive. Like, it's stupid. So I got the, the second option. I got this guy and like, which by the way, these are like, I guess, marketed for girls or something. Cause like all the colors, like there's no, no colors that like are masculine at all. I forget what the other colors were. I think there was like a yellow, a purple, like not even like this shade of purple. If it was this shade of purple, I would've bought it hands down. Like there's no black, there's no nothing. Like white was like the only like non-binary uh, color that I could get. I'm like, fine, I'll just take this one. It was on Black Friday for like 50 bucks. Like, so I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Fine, I'll buy it. Because I've been looking at these for like over a year. And I still never got one. Well, until now. Now I have one. Now I think it comes with uh, some stuff, right? Crap, I don't think it comes with photo paper. Yeah, I should probably get some photo paper for this guy. Whoops. Well, at least I didn't use it yet. <laughs> I want to say, oh, I'm pretty sure it's not that expensive. But yeah, it is. <laughs> it is kind of expensive. But I did it for the cheesy romance stuff. And that's something I've always wanted to do. It's gonna cost me a lot of money, but it's gonna be so fun and worth it. So, see how that goes. All right, so everything else I got was all through work because honestly, we were just blowing out stuff. We were trying to get rid of stuff for cheap so we had less to take back to the warehouse. So, I took some stuff myself, stuff that I wanted. Uh, so I got a couple of games. Uh, this game I've been wanting for months. But I did not want to pay the full price for it. Because I, I was interested, but not interested for $60. Not even $40. So I got Jump Force. The tag says about like $33. I paid nowhere close to that. <laughs> so I, I didn't mind dropping, let's say, I don't know, $10? I don't know. I, I got two games and I paid $25 for the two. I'll show you the next game soon. So yeah, I was interested in this game, but I, don't know, I did not want to pay the full price for it. But then my buddy Ian, uh, he's been pushing me to get this game. So I finally got it. And now that I got it, uh, it's not bad. I, it, we played it once and I had a good time with it. Um, I hear the story is very disappointing. The one thing I don't like about this game so far is there is no English voices. It's all Japanese. Like, I, I like anime. But I'm not that much of a weeb. Like, I want English voice acting. So I still have yet to unlock a lot of characters. My friend actually bought me the DLC. The DLC was like 30 bucks. So, God! But, I'm, I, this is gonna be cool. I'm excited to play this. At least to get more into the story. If I ever have time for it. I like how Luffy's jeans actually look real. Like, crap. It's a pretty game. It really is. So yeah, for 10 bucks, screw it, why not? The next game I got is more of a collector thing. This is something that I've always wanted in my collection for a couple of years now, but I didn't want to drop on the price. Like, I didn't want to dip, I should say, I don't know. Point is, I got it now. And that is a copy of Final Fantasy VII on PlayStation. The only real reason why I got it, because I have it on PC, so that's honestly one of the better ways to play it. But well, the only reason why I got it is because here I got the soundtrack for Final Fantasy VII. Because I love the music in it. And we also had this at the game stand. I've had this for like months at least. For almost a year now. And I got it because I was starting to collect video game soundtracks. And I love the music in this game. And I don't think I'd ever be able to buy it for the price that I got it for again. So I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'll buy it. So now I wanted to have a game to match it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I got Final Fantasy VII and Jump Force for like 10 bucks. Not 10 bucks. I, I paid uh, pay 25 for both. So I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I, I'm i proud of that. <laughs> I also got a few more games from the stand as well. Uh, one was like a, like a, what is it? It was a nostalgic piece. Actually, no, they're technically both nostalgic pieces. But I'll get into the stories. So, so hold up. All right, so the first one, uh, this is a game that I had as a kid. I haven't played it since I was a kid. But screw it. 
why not get it again? And that, Spongebob. <laughs> Spongebob Super Sponge, PS1. Like, I had this and uh, Revenge of the Flying Dutchman on Game GameCube. I still have that game. I don't have the case for it anymore, but I need to get that case again. It's supposed to be a $6 game, but Josh just let me take it. So, A. This is cool. <laughs> Should I play it on stream? I don't know, let me know in the, in the comments. I, I might play it. Why not? I also have one for Game Boy Color. I'm not sure if I still have that. Do I still have that? No, I don't. Shit. There's a couple of Game Boy games I actually wanted to buy through my stand that I never did. Spongebob being one of them. Pokemon Pinball was also another one. Oh, well. I think I still have my employee discount at that store. I can get them eventually. <laughs> another one. This was just more nostalgic to the stand than gaming for me in general because I never had an NES. I have one now. I'll have it set up or it's actually in the other room because an ex got it for me. I didn't want to look at it. But now I don't really care. Like I can have it on display, but I'm going to wait until like I get a better game room before I display it. But anyway, what I got next is a copy of Mario and Duck Hunt on NES. My first and only NES game. I, I kid you not. Like, th this is my only NES game I've ever had in my life. So you're probably wondering, um, why? Is it because you like Mario? Partially. Uh, here, back when I first started there, we had so many copies of these games. Like, we, uh, we would kid about, like, making a whole floor of just these cartridges. And it would have been really cool if we would have done it, but obviously we couldn't. Because <laughs> you'd have to like glue them to the floor and stuff, and then eventually they'd crack and break. It'd just be very unpleasant. But the, the fact that we had enough to do that says something. But then, uh, uh, the past few years, they've been getting a little bit tougher to get. But yeah, I wanted to just have one because we used to have a crap ton of these, and it's just a, a memory to the stand, you know? So yeah, now I have a copy of Mario and Duck Hunt. And eventually, I'm gonna get the other Mario games and other systems. Like, I want to have Mario World again. Uh, I want to have Mario 64 because I never had that as a kid. I I also could have gotten just the just Mario, no Mario and Duck Hunt, just Mario. As a collector, that's probably what I should have gone for. But for sentimental sake, I got this one in particular because this is what we had the most. <laughs> again, normally we probably sell this game for like six bucks or so. But again, he just let me have it because we kind of have a few of them already. So like, screw it. And besides, we always threw it in when we had sold NESs anyway. I also got a few cars as well. Like this one, I technically already have, but I have a different version of it. The version that I have has like snowflakes on it for some reason, but this one's just plain Jane. And that is this little Mario Kart. I don't know what specifically it is, but um, they actually repainted this in, um, what is it? Like when they made the Mario 30th anniversary collection, uh, when they made the Mario 2 car, yeah, they just made a metal version of this and just repainted it, and it's actually really awesome. Like, at least the pieces that are plastic, they made metal. It's really cool. Like, I don't know, I, I got the whole set. It's really nice. I was gonna collect the Mario Kart ones as well, but they ended up making too many, and they then ended up making, um, what is it, the exclusives? Like, they made a Metal, metal Mario, which I ended up buying at first, but then I found out there was a Gold Mario at Comic-Con, and that was a couple hundred dollars. So I said, screw that! Like, I, I go big or go home, it's either I'm going for the full set or none at all. So, I didn't buy it. Screw that. Nope, nope, done! And this one, I've wanted for years, because here Josh got it for display, and I'm like, man, I want that, I want to take it. He's like, no. So, that is this little Pikachu car. I'm pretty confident you saw, guys seen like pictures of the real versions of this, and as a kid, I always saw this uh, VW bus. Not bus, a, be a, be a, be a beetle, like a, a punch buggy. <laughs> uh, if I remember, I'll pull up a picture. But yeah, I've seen this as a kid. Uh, I could have swore it was a Wendy's parking lot or Burger King parking lot. I can't remember which parking lot it was. I saw it in a parking lot uh, through when I was in a drive-through really late at night one night. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And then this picture that you see, it was actually at a baseball game when I was with a another girlfriend. <laughs> and I was freaking out over it. And my girlfriend at the time, she's like, Kyle, why are you freaking out so, so much over a car? I'm like, you have no idea what this means to me. It's not just the fact that it's a Pikachu car. It's like, this is the car that I've seen as a kid. And like, it doesn't look exactly like this, but it looks pretty close. So that's why I wanted it. I also got these uh, little Sacklings, Sackboy and Sack Girls. Um, this is actually not even for me. 
I got these for my friend Chris because I know how bad he wanted these. And like, I already have some Sackboy plushes already, and they don't fit the same scale anyway. So I'm just gonna give them to him. So Chris, when you're watching this, surprise, I got you a gift. And here at the stand, we also had this time capsule. And uh, we were looking through it the one week, and we were having a good time. Like, like a lot of stuff in, in there is actually kind of lame. We both admit it was pretty lame. But this one thing, honestly, was so cool, I had to take this home. And it's this Winter 2003 catalog. Uh, so I guess during the holiday season, they would have like little books of like promoting all the games and stuff when they are trying to sell the GameCube and even the Game Boy. And I haven't gone like completely through this thing yet, but they advertise a bunch of cool stuff in here. Like you're talking about the GameCube, the different colors of controllers, even the Wavebird, like the Game Boy Advances and the SPs. I can't remember if this is the time where he also did the uh, the nice backlight too. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure these are actually the backlit ones down here, like the black and the silver one. I'm pretty sure they're the backlit ones. The e-reader, yeah, who bought that? <laughs> Pokemon cards, uh, yeah, I I stopped buying Pokemon cards when uh, like during this generation, third gen I didn't care about. Uh, then uh, e-reader cards. That's kind of cool. Okay, so the NES game ones. Okay, I had the Mario Brothers set because I just like collecting cards at the time. So I was collecting uh, Yu-Gi-Oh for the most part. But I saw that. I'm like, oh, snap. Put Mario cards. Heck yeah. So I bought so many packs of just Mario Brothers. Turns out it was all the same. It's just, it's, a, it's the full game on those cards. If only I would have knew that. I was a stupid kid back then. Hey, Patrick, what am I now? Uh, stupid? No! I'm Texas! What's the difference? Ah! <laughs> Mario Party! Uh, cool. Okay, next. Uh, advertising about connecting to the Game Boy from the GameCube and Game Boy Player? Hell yeah! I had that. Oh look! The Game Boy Player! Yeah, I had that. Ooh, they're advertising a bunch of stuff like even the, the broadband adapter and all that stuff. Oh, that's cool. Oh, we had this at the stand. I wanted to buy it. Oh, I'm so mad I never did. Oh, now I'm really pissed. Like, honestly, we had it for a while. I wanted to buy it. I'm so mad I forgot to. Double Dash, um, I finally have that. I only played it like once. <laughs> 1080 Avalanche, I don't care. Mario Party 5, I'm more of a 4 fan, but okay. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, uh, I don't have that. I don't care. Kirby Air Ride, I played that once. Uh, I I'm not gonna play that again. I hear it's good, I'm just not into it. Mario Golf, uh, I'm good. Zelda Four Swords, I don't care. Next, let's have a Purple Link. Purple Link looks pretty hot. I like purple. F-Zero GX, I have that game now. I haven't played it yet, but I have it. Thanks to my ex. Uh, she, she was great. She was pretty cool. Uh, Pikmin 2, I have that. Beautiful Joe and Star Wars, um, I don't care. Next, I hear they're good though. Soul Calibur 2 and Sonic Heroes, I have Sonic, but I only played Soul Calibur once. And I only played it because, hey, Link's in it, cool. Bunch of other games I don't care about, except for Tony Hawk, Tony Hawk's kinda cool. Hey look, Yu-Gi-Oh, Harry Potter, um, uh, again, there's, there's advertising games. Sports games, we all don't care about them. Ninja Turtles, Simpsons Hit and Run, I don't know, there's some stuff in here, okay, cool. I feel like I'm reading to like, like an elementary class. Like, they're looking at all the pictures as I'm reading this book. <laughs> hey, Battle for Bikini Bottom. Now that's being remade. Holy crap. Speaking of, like, I'm not sure how well that game's gonna be. Like, I know it's gonna be a good game, but I'm mainly concerned about the speedrun community because I know that game has a huge speedrun community. Oh, look at that advertisement for Game Boy Advance. Man, I miss these cool advertisements back in the day. Oh yeah, Mario 3 on the Game Boy Advance. I have that. I barely played it. I only bought it because I had this, the show on DVD. Fire Emblem! Man, that's worth a lot of money now. Oh yeah, Roy's our boy. Heck yeah. I'm pretty sure it's Roy. I hope it is. Man, I'd be stupid if I wasn't. Uh, let's see, uh, Luigi's Ma not Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, see, I really am stupid. Mario and Luigi, uh, Superstar Saga. I, th I, I didn't have this. I don't plan on ever getting it though. Final Fantasy Tactics for the Advanced. Isn't that also on PlayStation? I don't know. Metroid Zero Mission, that's neato. Sword of Mana, I don't care. It's probably a good game, but I just personally don't care. Top Gear Rally, who gives a shit? Why does that game have a full feature, by the way? It looked Banjo-Kazooie! Yeah, he's in Smash, and he's, he was on Game Boy Color. Not Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. See, I'm really freaking stupid. Hey, Dragon Ball Z and Prince of Persia, I don't care. But Dragon Ball Z is kind of cool. Hey, Yu-Gi-Oh! I like Yu-Gi-Oh! Look, it's the, the Obelisk Tormentor! That's neat! Oh yeah, Ninja Turtles. That, yeah, they're cool. Uh, Sims busting out? I don't know, like, it's this Game Boy game, so can yeah, who cares, like, who gives a crap? Um, if I don't see a Crash advertisement in here, I'm gonna be upset, because I see a Spyro. It's Sonic's Pinball Party, I forgot that game even existed, to be fair. 
Oh, he, good, good. Okay, we got Crash. Yeah, okay, we're good. I'm happy. And Beyblade. Uh, I actually used to have that game. Never played it. Uh, what else is on here? Um, uh, not much. Wait, Oddworld Munch's Odyssey was on the Game Boy Advance? What? I didn't know that. I knew it was on Xbox, but I didn't know it was also on Game Boy. Shit. Yo, how many of y'all knew that? I didn't. And then a bunch of other, like, third-party games that no one cares about. Man. This is cool. I used to have one of these for the DS, and I think it advertised Wii games as well. But point is, it was really cool. I spent too much time on this. <laughs> Alright, uh, I guess the last thing I'm going to show off, at least I'm pretty sure this is, a, this is the only other thing I got. This is something that I've wanted since I was a kid. So, uh, I have a Wii over here. Yeah, I like the Wii. The Wii's pretty cool in my opinion. Uh, I mean, it's, it was when it was in its prime. I enjoyed it at least. I know a lot of people don't, and I understand why they don't. But personally, I liked it. But here, I've wanted a Wii ever since I was a kid. But I didn't get my Wii until like a couple of months before the Wii U came out. So, I missed out on a lot. I mean, I always went to my neighbors to play Brawl and Wii Sports and all that stuff. But, I never had the Wii personally at my house. So, I couldn't really enjoy it properly. But, I always loved the box for it. Like, I don't know. Like, I just love their marketing during the first couple of years for the Wii. Like, and plus, even the DS Lite as well. Like, I don't know. I, I, I get nostalgic whenever I see the commercials on YouTube. Like, if I ever look them up. But again, I always wanted the box. I always wanted to see that under the Christmas tree or see it wrapped up for my birthday or something, but I never got one. So, uh, we had a bunch of boxes displayed on top of our stand, and I finally got myself a Wii box. So I'm going to display this somewhere in my room, like where all my other boxes are on top, but I have no way of displaying this right now. I just got to re-optimize it, and then I'll be okay, but man, this is cool though. At first we were going to throw it, away, throw it away, but I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna regret not getting this, so I bought it. Not bought it, no, I actually took it. <laughs> uh, there's a few things I wish I could have gotten from the stand, but it's too late now. Oh well, I forgot about them. But, I mean, I took plenty of souvenirs. I'm happy, I'm really happy. Again, I'm gonna miss that job, I'm gonna miss people, but life goes on, you know? Nothing lasts forever. But, that is everything that I picked up for November. Uh, now, it's time to get stuff in December, you know, Christmas, that's, that's a good time. I haven't picked up anything, personally, for December yet. Well, <laughs> sad that right now, it's recording, it's the 6th. But anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Um, see how pickups go for Christmas and how pickups go, like, after 2020. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I say that a lot. <laughs> we'll see what happens. That's my catchphrase, at least in my real life. But yeah, yeah, th again, thank you for watching. Um, We'll see what the future holds. And I love you guys. And if you're new and you like what you saw, you know what to do. In the description, there's social medias. So, um, yeah. I guess I'll see you on the next one. So, uh, peace, peace.